Lord and Architect Lemmy cares for place. If your architecture is not just some sort of signature wackiness, but grows out of that place, it can be both modern and deeply rooted at one and the same time. Um, so in Scotland you do think more particularly about this building on the slope, about the intensity of place. And I think it's more liberating and indeed radical to look at earlier traditions um, in terms of the way that Edinburgh or Elgin, Glasgow or St Andrews or any historic Scot Scottish place has. There is a feeling that Scottish building, whether it's classicism or modernism, has presence and a solidity and an austerity and a, 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 a to it that is different from other architectures. Edinburgh is a Jekyll and Hyde city. Um, the, the extremes of difference are rather wonderful. If you come to Edinburgh, you must climb hills. You must climb Scott Monument. You must climb Arthur's Seat or Carlton Hill. And you sit there and the city sort of goes on below you. And then you must go down into the city and experience the uh, a complete opposite. Um, the dark bars, let's go to a Clark's Bar or Bennett's or, or the Waverley um, and experience that warmth. Or you go into the urban spaces and you, you feel how the enlightenment happened, that these are rooms, that these aren't squares, that these are urban rooms. The Scottish enlightenment and of course Scotland's at the heart of enlightenment happened in that space. And it really was because all the classes, all the people mixed in that space, met each other, shook hands. So it seems to me that this tradition of building on top of each other, of social interaction within the city, is really, really at the heart of our conviviality, when we're convivial, um, interaction, social interaction. We've made buildings that interact with the place and they're about commerce and friendship and bumping into each other and all of that is what's creative about building in Scotland.